Welcome to the Humanities Team Podcast with me, Steve Farrell. Humanities Team is an international spiritual movement whose purpose is to communicate and demonstrate the timeless truth that we are all one, with the divine and all life, caring for each other and the world we share, so that people's actions reflect this profound understanding within our generation. We believe that living this truth is essential to resolving the most chronic and acute world challenges and vital to creating a flourishing world of peace, harmony, and happiness. We offer transformative education programs in personal and spiritual development, and we host an annual event called Global Oneness Day. Similar to Earth Day, which galvanized the global environmental movement, Global Oneness Day has become a catalyst for spiritual activism and an integral part of the present-day global oneness movement, which represents a profound new paradigm in human culture. Humanities Team is the only global nonprofit organization working in transformational education. Since we are a nonprofit, there is no focus on growing profits or satisfying shareholders, and 100% of all revenue goes toward our work supporting conscious evolution, planetary awakening, and flourishing at every level of life. If you'd like to learn more about us or want to support our mission directly through donation or volunteering some of your time, please visit us online at humanitiesteam.org. And lastly, if you enjoy this podcast, we'd be grateful if you'd leave us a review. Hey there, uh, welcome to Acceleration, everyone. Uh, good to be with you. I'm Steve Farrell, the co-founder and executive director of Humanities Team. And as you can see, I've got this uh, beautiful friend on the screen, uh, and this is Suzanne Giesman. I'm gonna formally introduce her in just a moment here. I'm real excited about this program with Suzanne. Uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. So, um, so a couple of things. One, we're coming to you live. I'm in Boulder, Colorado, coming to you live from our Humanities Team studio here. And Suzanne is coming to you from Hilton Head, South Carolina, from uh, her home live. Uh, so we're going to watch some uh, video clips, get into some great conversation. People are going to be coming in live to talk with us. Just got a beautiful hour in store for you. Now, um, so a couple of things here. First, let me just shout out to the Humanity Stream members that are with us. The Humanities team members with us, uh, Suzanne Giesman's friends on her Facebook pages that we're broadcasting to, and our friends with the Sign Network, uh, we're broadcasting out to the pages that they're uh, connected with. So uh, thank you all of you for joining us. Now, as we do every week, uh, I can see uh, here on a screen in the studio your questions and comments. So uh, throw questions and comments at us, and Suzanne and I, We'll get to as many as we can. Now, the theme for today's program is connecting across the veil. And if you know uh, Suzanne and her work, you'll you understand why that would be our theme. She's uh, just an incredible medium and, and, uh, and leader in this whole area of consciousness. So we're uh, very excited to have her back on the program. Let me formally introduce her. Suzanne Giesman, and it's pronounced Giesman, is a highly sought after and respected medium who has written 13 books on spirituality and connecting with those whose souls have passed to the other side. She is also an incredible teacher of the art of mediumship and divine connection. Four of her courses are available on Humanity Stream Plus, including Making the Connection and Your Emerging Soul, which we will be discussing in more detail today. Suzanne is an, is an evidential psychic medium who brings peace to loved ones and shows us that our reality is not as simple as it appears on the surface. Her two courses that we will be previewing today are Making the Connection, which is an introductory class to mediumship, and Your Emerging Soul, which explores the nature of higher consciousness in ways that will enrich your life. So uh, welcome again to the program, Suzanne. Great to have you with us. Thank you, Steve, and welcome everybody. I just get excited anytime I get to sit and spend a whole hour talking about unified consciousness, all of these topics that we're both so excited about. That we are, yeah, it's wonderful. You, uh, you're you doing so many good things actually all over the world and travel this country with your husband. And so here we catch you in your uh, home and 
in uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina. So very nice. Maybe we'll even see one of your pets barking in the back background here during the you hour. You very well hear them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, so let's start, Suzanne. We were chatting just before we came onto the program about this whole aspect that, of course, you were a leader in the military and the armed forces, and you were a very senior military officer. And then uh, through a whole, uh, a whole bunch of things that happened in your life, you ended up leaving and pivoting to this uh, leadership work that you're doing now as a medium and much more. Uh, and, I, and we said we'd talk about it because there's so many people uh, that we talk to in humanities team who share they have the job, they feel that job that, which is in the unconscious world is necessary. And this whole pivot uh, is concerning. So yeah, if you wanna just talk a little bit about how you made that pivot uh, it'd be it'd be wonderful. It'd be a great place to start. I like that you use the word pivot, Steve, because it really is like a 180 degree turn, the work that I'm doing now compared to in the military. And yet I didn't leave it completely behind because I'm laughing. Ty and I went for a walk this morning and we always walk in step. And when one of us is not out, not in step with the other, we do this little shift pivot so that we are completely in step. I remember doing something this morning and saluting. So we joke and we call each other sir and ma'am. It's still part of our lives. And yet I so embrace this new part of our lives together. When I first discovered that I could connect with the greater reality and began working as a medium, the documentary about my transition called Messages of Hope that's on Amazon Prime and YouTube came out and the initial version showed photos of me in my prior job with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I was his aide, the head of the US military. When I asked him, is it okay if we use these images? He asked us to take them out. He was not comfortable being seen in any film that had to do with mediumship. And he made some comments that showed his and I, I use this in the nicest term, his ignorance of the greater reality. And it was the first time that I truly stood up for what I know to be true, that the greater reality is here, that we are part of it, and that when we merge with it in awareness, our lives change. This is what all of my teaching is about now. And many people were very intimidated by this general. He, he is an intimidating figure. And this was the first time when I absolutely stood my ground and said, sir, I understand and respect where you are, but this is reality and I will take you out of the video. But to disparage this work is coming from a place that shows you really don't know what you're talking about. And I intend to fully dive into this work. And he actually came back and apologized. So it was a, it was a David and Goliath moment for me. <laughs> and it only happened because it wasn't Suzanne Giesman defending herself. And this is key for everybody listening. It was the soul within this person playing the role of Suzanne Giesman saying, now you know who you are, the soul. And once that light starts to shine, it's something you can't not do. So anybody who truly starts to taste the essence of who they are, can't deny it any longer. And then it's just a matter of standing in your truth from a place of love and working that, integrating that into everything that you do. Yes, agreed. And then there's so much prosperity when we, when we do that, when we just come into this flow of life with, and the afterlife of course is a part of it, we're all one, you know, so this afterlife, this embodied, life uh, that we're all in, 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 a, in this current moment of now. Uh, so uh, it's as simple and as complex as that, but where we drop down into that place and live into this place of connection, and, and of course love is its basis, uh, then prosperity in so many different forms surface. And I, you know, my own story, you, I think you know, is, is similar where I was a technology executive in Silicon Valley and operating with venture capital uh, leaders and business leaders and things. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it had some similarity in that when that, that moment came where I needed to leave uh, and just talk 
honestly about this whole that we're one, you know, that, uh, that there's no such thing as separation, that the, we're actually emanations of the divine. Uh, what what uh, and, and allowed me to stay connected with them was just that they loved me and, and trusted me. Uh, it was that personal connection, but, but the whole new reality that I uh, w was feeling into is, of course, it's very foreign to, to many people. It was for them. Right. That, that, what I was, sorry I interrupted you, but that connection is love. Love is not an emotion. It is the connection. And right. we are all connected, so we can't help but feel it when we tune into how we are not separate from each other. You reminded me of something I had forgotten, that when I first retired from the Navy, I actually was hired as a consultant for a strategic planning company and was doing workshops on the road about once a month. I really didn't like it that much, but the abundance was amazing. I just couldn't get passionate about it. And all of the mediumship work started to unfold and I didn't see it as work, but I knew I had to dedicate myself to it. And I said to Ty, I don't wanna do this other work anymore. I can't do it. My heart is not in it. And it was lucrative. And he looked a little bit askance, like you're gonna <laughs> give that up. And I said, I need to, it's holding me back from diving fully into my spiritual work. And he being this wonderful husband just said, okay, do it. And that was the right move. And again, you use the word prosperity and I didn't do it for the money's sake. I did it because my heart said, this is what you need to do. And that was the best decision I could have ever made because then you attract to yourself opportunities that you can't see if you're focused on limitation. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I could tell a similar story, but I'm not going to just in the interest of time. But, um, but let me go to something. Another thing that I love, Suzanne, about your work is you share of kind of the before moment where this whole mediumship thing was Greek, where there wasn't an awareness of how this worked. And now, of course, uh, including on these, these uh, programs that you have on the humanity stream platform, you're teaching people how to become a medium. Uh, so you went from just where most people would stand today, it just have no recognition of this communication with the afterlife to being really quite an experienced and thoughtful uh, teacher. So do you want to uh, do you want to just say a few words about that? Because I think you could give people a lot of hope here as well. That is a, a major point that many mediums who I know today are those who have seen spirits their whole life. They come from families with a lineage of being mediums. And there's not a single person I know in my family who had any of these abilities. I've heard from several born mediums, as we call them, who say it's genetic. And I have asked my ancestors in the spirit world. I, I know my own family and nobody acknowledged this ability. So I can speak from personal experience that even if you haven't had it until your middle years and you don't know anybody else in your family that had it, it can be developed. Whether or not it's your calling, that depends on if you'll dive in and fully develop it as I have. I couldn't not do this work, but I know that we all have the ability to make the connection with loved ones who have passed, our own and others and our guides and the masters because we are all souls you don't have to wait till you pass to communicate as a soul with other souls that's the greatest news of all yeah yeah no kidding yeah and you do wonderful work here just training people all over the world to communicate with their ancestors and with the afterlife so we're going to go now to uh, a video it's called your emerging soul and it's this is a two and a half minute clip There's a paradox here when it comes to understanding the greater reality. And that is, you can't experience the greater reality with the side of you that's human, the brain and your whole operating system that uses the senses to sense reality.
You just can't do it. So you have to accept that there's a part of you that is not physical. You see? You have to get outside of the box just to experience that greater reality. And that can be challenging. So the key is to acknowledge that your intellect, <coughs> your mind, can only take you so far. And then you have to get so outside of this mentality <coughs> that it's either human or spirit. I'm going to really hammer this point home this weekend, that we are both human and spirit at the same time. And that makes all the difference, realizing that we're not just here in human form and then we die and we go to the spirit world. We are souls here and now, which is how the soul often leaves us signs that it knows it's going to pass. The two worlds may seem very different, but they're actually all of one great whole, the formless and the formed, the eternal and the temporary. Your human side is the temporary side. The spirit side is eternal. With you before you came here and long after you leave here, eternal. But the thing is, they make up one great big reality that you are a part of now. So I have this little model that I developed that shows the physical world down at the bottom, where we have plants, rocks, animals, and then we move up the scale of consciousness to the human level. We're all familiar with interacting on that level. I've already shared stories with you of interacting with the spirit world, with those who've passed to the other side, and then your guides would be a little higher up. And I'm going to share with you examples tonight of interacting with the masters at the highest levels. But really, the biggest message here is that it's all just one mind. Yes, it is. We are all one. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, so nice. And those nice charts there and things just getting into uh, this whole spirit world and human world and paradox and things. Do you want to say a word? Of, this, is, this is really a beautiful program. As I mentioned, I was watching it last night. Do you want to say a little bit more about it here, Suzanne? I love this program. As you can see, it was filmed from a live workshop that I led and you'll pick up the energy of the students taking the class then. But this is the, the message that we see world at this world as the physical world, and maybe there's a non-physical world, but that is from the limited human point of view. When we can shift outside that view, we realize there's only one world. We call it physical because we use our physical senses, but it's all actually unfolding in consciousness. The more we come to know that, that whole first module of the course is called getting out of the box. And you realize you can shift out of the box at any time. The whole view changes and life becomes absolutely miraculous. Yes, it does. Yeah, conversations with God. And of course, Neil Donald Walsh was one of the co-founders of Humanities Team. And there's this nine series of books and uh, viewers probably have some familiarity with this series. And it says that, our invitation in life is to announce and declare, express and fulfill, become and experience who we really are, which is, which is love. So in a sense, when we kind of step back and look at that, it's almost like when we grow up here in the United States and many parts of the world, our ladder is kind of leaning against the wrong wall because <laughs> you know what we're doing is we're climbing that ladder. Is, it's very much about the old American dream of materiality and you know, power over and fame and all of these things. Uh, but what we realize is, is we never, never quite quench that thirst, you know, we never get there. Uh, it just, you just kind of keep climbing and climbing and climbing. Uh, and those worry leaves never, never drop off. Whereas if we move that ladder over against this other wall where we understand who we really are, and then just make this pivot that Suzanne uh, just talked about her pivot. I actually made a similar pivot and then just really live as who we really are, live in that place of flow, of, of connection, of love, and of service. Uh, wow, you know, then it all comes together. And we're not just out there on a desert chasing a mirage. You know, it's like right here, right now, always. Wouldn't you say, Suzanne? I, I would, and you made me laugh there a minute ago when you said living in the United States. And I know that we have viewers <laughs> right now who are from all over the world. That's the beauty of the internet. A lot of people who follow my work come from many, many countries, but there is the final module, the final third of this Your Emerging Soul course is called 
living in the USA, but it's a play on the letters USA because what it really stands for is living in the United States of awareness because that's all we have is a state of awareness. So are you going to live in the state of awareness of being only human? Or are you going to live in the awareness of I am a soul? Or how about the United States of awareness of being human and awareness of being a soul? When you can live from that combined awareness, then you've truly reclaimed your power as a soul in human form. And it doesn't, that's not the human ego's kind of power. This is the power to, to make love and unity and peace a part of every moment and that's why i can barely contain myself if you can <laughs> feel it right now because i'm so excited about more and more people coming to know this absolutely yeah it's the true invitation in life you know and unfortunately most of us didn't grow up with this awareness but now uh because there are conscious teachers and leaders all over the world that are sharing this similar message it's it's our time to awaken and so you know, it's happening and we're, we were talking even before the program, we're like well down this path and headed straight into it. And there's, I don't think there's any stopping it now. So, and that's what we're here to talk about during the hour is just all of the beauty of it and, and some really phenomenal teachings that Suzanne has. We're gonna now go and look at another uh, program. So there, there are these two new programs on the Humanity Stream platform. Uh, we just looked at one, Your, Your Emerging Soul, which is Fantastic, I was watching it last night. There's this other one called Making the Connection, and uh, we're gonna go look at a three minute uh, section from that uh, program right now. So the two worlds do interact and intermingle, interpenetrate each other. My guide, Sanaya, showed me they said, get one of those fiber optic lights. Remember those from the 70s? And I have one in my room where I do readings now. And they said that, pick a color, like, okay, blue. So the human level would be all the blue lights. And then red, arbitrary color, is, would be those who pass to the spirit world. And then yellow would be the next level of spirit guides. And then green would be like your, the masters all interpenetrating, one big web, but different vibrational levels. And we just raise and lower our levels to communicate with them. And then they did something really cool. They said, now picture that light, turn it upside down, and you can see that all flow from the same source, right? So the people that we connect with in the spirit world, I call them people because they're still people. They still grow, they still learn, they still love, they still have personality traits, and they're right here. They know about this class. Oftentimes in a reading, they'll know the reading's coming long before it's even scheduled. And I'll be doing readings and I'll say, this is a setup from the spirit world, this one, you know? Uh, so let's see how much you learned this morning already, if you're paying attention. What is the highest vibration? Love. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> no, yeah, let me get, I'll go home. <laughs> All right, good. So, how I came to know that, I mean, not just know it, but know it, I've mentioned it earlier, is through sitting silently every day after Susan died. And I'm telling you, the first three weeks, I fell asleep every time. And I'd wake up and I'd say, this is a waste of time. And it sounded so strange at the time to say to my husband, I'm going to go meditate now, because we just didn't do that. That was 10 years ago, 11 years ago now. But over a couple of months, I started to notice that I was knowing things about other people. My intuition came back online from sitting in the silence. This meditation thing was starting to have payoff that I didn't realize would happen. My goal was just to get to know if Susan is still here, I wanna connect with you. And that didn't happen for a couple of years, but it happened. And now she drops in from time to time. So um, let me share, we do have, as I mentioned, some great comments and questions here. 
Uh, I want to be sure to get to them. Um, also, so if you're a Humanity Stream member, I want to invite you if you want to come on camera. Uh, if you're in that, uh, that VIP room and you want to come on camera, just put your hand up, let us know. And then uh, Suzanne will be able to see you. We'll, uh, we'll see you as well. Viewers will see you. But don't be shy. Uh, you know, this is a blast. So just invite any of you that want to come on camera to, to do so. Um, so one of the questions here is from Judith. Uh, and Judith says, love your work, seen so many signs with footage, evidence, but uh, my family thinks I'm crazy. So this is kind of getting what we were talking, this pivot that we were talking about earlier, huh? Here, Suzanne. Oh, yeah. I, I hear that a lot from people. So be selective what you share. Enjoy, stressing that word joy, what you know, what you're coming to know. Radiate your strength in standing for what you know but it's not your path judith to change their minds they don't have to agree with you and that's that phrase is so true what others think about me is none of my business when you can get to the point where it doesn't matter what others think of you when you know you're not crazy what what you're doing is healing and helpful for yourself and for others then sooner or later it won't matter what they say and you won't try to change them and they may actually come to respect that. Yes, and, and, and uh, just to add to that too, so where we're just, our, our invitation is this whole being state thing that uh, Suzanne and I are talking about. And where we're just, where we are in that being state and people don't understand it or think it's silly or whatever, uh, you know, it, that's not an issue or problem at all. You know, that it's a projection. and. Uh, actually, for, for me, when I was in Silicon Valley and I used to experience this with people and I, w and I understood I would sit in meetings with many of them, I knew what was going on in their personal life with their spouses and their kids and things where there were some pretty severe challenges, quite honestly. And, uh, and I, I actually felt, uh, uh, what's the word I want to select here, uh, concerned, uh, more than concerned. For, for them because the, this whole spiritual element they hadn't embraced and it was more of a materiality thing that was going on and I could feel their pain, you know, so it's more than just a concern. I could, I could feel their pain actually, you know, in how they live their life. So uh, there's a beautiful story, by the way, uh, that uh, Suzanne shared of this general uh, that she was working with that didn't want to be on this, she's on her documentary on Amazon Prime. Yeah, we uh, talked about she, that this hour. Yeah. 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 So, which, which kind of just says this whole thing of we don't, you know, let's stand in who we are. Uh, in, in fact, even uh, have appreciation for people that don't understand it and that really are, are uh, don't have the awareness of what conscious living is because it's actually not us well, that are losing out here. But we've been there and that's the thing and probably Judith and others as well. We know how it feels to live inside the box, to think you're only human and you want others to feel this, but again, that's their path and hopefully they'll come to it, but pushing people that way doesn't help. So just be in that being state that Steve talks of, and that is soul awareness. That's the soul that's simply just shining. Yeah, absolutely, beautiful. Okay, let me get to some other, uh, one other question. Then there's uh, actually an exercise that uh, Suzanne said she could do, you know, a uh, uh, here goes method, which sounds really intriguing. So let me go to one more question, then we'll go to this experiential thing that I think you'll really enjoy. So um, here's a question from uh, uh, Athea, Athea. She says, hi, Suzanne, thank you so much for this evening and all the, or the, the so this, is, this person's in, in an evening time zone and all the videos you do, I have lost someone very dear to me this year. And after he died, he sent some beautiful signs. I have also dreamt of him. And I also believe that two of my spirit guides exist. My question is, I'm a bit nervous about learning mediumship. I'm still hung up about what the Bible says about mediumship, etc. Although the other side of my thinking is that God is not about religion. What are your thoughts about this, please? This is so simple. What does your heart say about it? 
when you believe what other people say, you're picking up on their fear. Your heart is pulling you towards this. Your loved one across the veil is already saying, dive in, I'm ready to talk to you. And just follow that heart each step of the way. Is it helpful in healing? You will find it is. And then you'll just be able to say, well, that's other people's beliefs. I would take what the heart says over any words written or spoken anytime. Yeah, beautiful. The feelings are our gateway to the heart and to ultimate reality. So beautiful. <laughs> um, okay, let me, we're going to, we'll get to some other questions here too. So uh, Judith and Jay have some questions here. We'll come back to them. Let, let's go to this um, experiential exercise that uh, Suzanne shared that she could bring in, which, which sounds beautiful. Yes, it's, it's just an abbreviated way of tuning into spirit at any time. But I really wanted to emphasize, Steve, that the courses that I teach show you the foundation to be able to shift to the other realities at will. There's a lot of teaching as to what is actually going on when you make this shift. It really is as simple as setting an intention to change the channel of your state of awareness. And just like that, with a clear intention and the belief that the other realities are right here, we literally just shift. And right now I can tune into my guides just like that. But some people need to really understand how that works, what's going on, and that's what we dive into in the course. Once you understand that, the here goes method, make sure you're aligned and ready to do that in any instant. So let's do it right now. Here is simply a cue to get centered before you go on with the rest of the process. So notice how I'm shifting in my chair. I'm making sure that I'm settled. I visualize a shaft of white light connecting me to the heavens and going all the way down into the earth. I take a nice centering breath to become here, present. So everybody, I hope you're doing this with me. Exhale longer than you inhaled to trigger that relaxation response in the body. And now we go through the four steps that GOES stands for in here GOES. And G stands for ground yourself. Sitting in this shaft of white light, feel the energy that's flowing down from above. Go out through the soles of your feet and ground you into the earth. That keeps a steady flow of the life force uninterrupted. It's always there anyway, but once we become aware of it through this grounding process, you're more centered than ever. O stands for open your field with intention. You just become aware of the energy centers within your energy body and with intention, just open them. It's done through your will, through consciousness. E stands for expand your aura so that you fill all time and space. I like to do this with the breath. Just take in a nice breath and exhale it so you hear it and feel it. And now your awareness is limitless, not just focused on the external physical world, but mingling, merging with all fields everywhere. And the final S in G-O-E-S stands for shift. So in this expanded, grounded, open state, we literally just say shift. And having done that, now you can sense any spirits who might be around, even if you don't sense them, this is a nice expanded state in which to ask any question. So let's take advantage of that. You're in that nice expanded open state. Having made that shift, please ask of whoever has the highest answer for you, what do I need to know now? And you may have heard something in that brief pause there. That certainly would be optimum. But you just ask that question of higher beings in an expanded state with the trust that they are there. So even if you didn't hear an answer just then, that answer will come to you in whatever way you're able to perceive it in the coming days. Maybe you'll hear it. Maybe you'll see it written somewhere and it'll just jump right out at you because you asked so clearly. Maybe you'll meet just the right person with the answer. No matter what, that here goes process is an excellent way to get 
answers to questions like that. So there you go, Steve. Beautiful. Love it. That's a beautiful exercise. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I always, what always comes back to me is just service, you know, being in this loving essence and service and boy, you know, you want to find uh, true prosperity <laughs> where, where we, I actually think we're designed that way in this oneness. Uh, so let me ask you this question, Suzanne, evidential mediumship, you've brought this up. It's come up in the course of this program. Can you talk about what that means? Yes, it is when a medium is not satisfied unless they receive information from those across the veil that they couldn't possibly know and the client can validate it and it leads to information that they needed and backs up messages from spirit that might not we might not be able to prove such as I'm fine, mom. I'm doing okay. I was given permission from a reading I did just this morning, Steve, to share a beautiful piece of evidence where a woman's daughter in the spirit world we were communicating with showed me a rainbow and put that rainbow over her sibling's head. I knew claircognizantly she was not talking about sending a rainbow to her brother. I knew this had to do with homosexuality. And the mother said, oh my goodness, her brother just came out to the family and he was worried that he should, should have come out when his sister was alive so that she would know too. And we just rejoiced and said, well, there you go. She knows. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. Um, yeah. And these stories, you know, where there's uh, a person like you that's very effective at this. And of course, you're again, you're teaching people to become mediums. So, and you're saying everybody has this ability. It's like playing the piano. Or are you going to take a little time to learn to play this instrument or not, right? Which is the beautiful thing. You, and you do, you do it so well, but you're saying, don't, you don't need to be looking to me. You know, here's some instruction on how to do it yourself, which is, That's which is what consciousness. I, I, I really want to teach people how to fish, right? So they can catch yeah. themselves and, and talk to their own loved ones. That's the joy of it, that knowing that anybody can do this, you don't have to become dependent on mediums and psychic. It's like giving someone their own genie in a bottle or the key to heaven. It's right here. Until you know that, you feel shut off. I know that from experience. But now experience is what I want to give everyone, the personal experience to know that you can do this too. You are a soul here and now, and that key to heaven is right here within you. And this whole aspect, of course, everlasting life is implicit in this, that uh, there's no such thing as death. And I, I know, you know, I've never asked you this question, but I know you probably would say there's not even a half a percent in a hundred percent where you would say there's some possibility that there's a true death and you just go away, right? I mean, oh, you mean, you know? It's, it's, it doesn't exist. The body certainly ceases functioning and goes away, but death really is a transition to a different state of consciousness. Total awareness, yeah. Because this is a whole nother where we know with certainty that's true. This whole conscious living thing is what it becomes all about. Uh, that's all yeah, working we together. Can, we can talk about it on and on and on. These are just words, but the goal of all of my teaching, all the classes that you're, I'm so grateful you're offering, is people can have the experience of that greater reality now themselves without having to die first. Yeah, beautiful. And isn't that nice? Yeah. Who wants to die first to, to experience it? <laughs> Stop that. We can't stop that from happening, but uh, we can experience what our loved ones are experiencing right now. And it's, it's, I'll tell you, when I first started touching that realm, personally through experience, I had to not put on my, my eye makeup first thing in the morning because I would cry tears of joy from feeling the love that I had never experienced in normal human waking consciousness. And the mascara would be running down my face. <laughs> And, and uh, it doesn't happen every time, but it only has to happen one time to touch that that depth of love that is us, that is here for us, that we came here to share, to to say, I want some more of that, and it's ours for the taking. Yes, yes, it is, and uh, 
And then the beauty of what the whole invitation of life was in the first place re reveals itself. Fantastic. So, uh, and job on the other side, what, what oh, would you say about that, Jobs Suzanne? on the other side are all about service. They're all about connection. Many inspire us here on this earth. There are those who are working to help uh, scientists to discover cures for illnesses. There are those who are helping to inspire people addicted to drugs, how to not use them. There are those with who meet those who've passed through perhaps suicide and greet them and help them to understand their experiences. All of them have to do with connection and love and service. Conversations with God, I brought this in earlier, some other material from it. What it says is that after we pass, that we won't care at all about these things that are materiality, you know, a, a job, a bank account, a luxury house or vacation. That These are not things actually that count at all. And so, and, and in the afterlife review, where people are, where we're actually looking at ourselves uh, and feeling uh, ourselves through other people that were with us, it's it's all really about how loving we were and in service we were, isn't Indeed. it? Indeed. I remember reading where I had no idea what, what the family dynamics were, but my client said, does my mother have a message for us? And I listened, I said, your mother says, if I had known what that money would do to you kids, I would have burned it all before I passed. <laughs> <laughs> and then she showed me lawyers and the kids separating and getting angry at each other over mom's estate. And I just thought that was, and it was absolutely accurate. <laughs> so she knew. Yeah, thanks, Steve. It's my name, SuzanneGiesman.com. And I would encourage anybody to go to my homepage. We have just come out with a free e-guide that introduces you to the path to healing here and now. It's just a, a menu, a buffet of all of the resources, many of them free, that you can pick and choose from. And we even have them categorized as what is your goal? Is it healing? Is it mediumship? Is it understanding who you are and where to begin? on this journey. So I hope people will check it out and check out the YouTube videos. It's uh, all about the ripples that we create once we start down this path. The ripples that create this whole, when we talk about making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, it's where each of us is a ripple where we were through our own life lived, where that splash in the pond and then these ripple out where people experience us and our teachings. And so uh, that's, that's our invitation. Boy, let's all be huge ripples in this pool of uh, conscious living, bringing it into our homes and our workplaces, our schools, our hospitals. Uh, that's not only a dream and, uh, and a vision, it's, it's our destiny, right? We've been, this is one of the things Suzanne and I've been bringing around here during the hour. We are, we're, we're, we're down this path and we're going straight to a destination. And, but how do we do it? Through all of our participation. So, so we hope that during this hour, we've shared a few things that maybe might be valuable to you uh, in your own, during your own conscious journey. Uh, check out Suzanne's programs. Uh, come back uh, next week. We've got another special guest that you'll enjoy. And uh, Suzanne and Humanities team have got uh, neat things planned. We do this Global Oneness Summit every year. We had a phenomenal summit this year. Uh, we've got a, another one, of course, next year, our 13th, and Suzanne's going to be hosting a Global Oneness Summit panel, and we look forward to doing a lot more with her. We'll be bringing her back to a celebration, too. So, Godspeed to you, Suzanne. Uh, thank you for your good work. Thanks for your partnership. Uh, just absolutely love who you are and your many contributions to an awakened world. Uh, so, let me... Also, just thank you viewers. Thanks for spending an hour with us here on your uh, Friday afternoon, at least in, for most people, unless you're in Japan, in which case it's uh, Saturday. <laughs> if you'd like to receive all of our new podcast episodes, please click on the subscribe button. To find out more about Humanities Team transformational education programs and about how you can help support our mission, please visit us online at humanitiesteam.org where you can also sign up for our email list so we can let you know about our free online events and other news about what we're up to each week. 
And again, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review. Thank you.